In today's video, I'm going to be going over EG4's GridBoss and FlexBoss 21 all-in-one hybrid solar inverter. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a detailed spec review on both of these in separate videos. So I won't be going into that much detail on the specs in this video. But what I do want to do is go over the installation of this, how it works, and then load test it. I actually want to try and start my four-ton traditional air conditioner on the FlexBoss 21. Now, I do have a free PDF, if you'd like, that's a wiring diagram of how I installed this whole system down to the wire sizes. I mean, links to the gutter I use, to the conduit I use, the connectors I use, literally every piece I use for the install I link to in that PDF. And you can download that for free by going to FlexBoss21.com. Now, who is this system ideal for? This system is perfect for someone who is sick of relying on the utility grid, worried about blackouts, sick of blackouts, want to lower your electrical bill, or if you want to, you can completely go 100% off grid with this system. Now, this FlexBoss 21 can power an entire home, not just a critical loads panel with some lights and some outlets. This can power everything, including your air conditioner. This thing can run, when solar is present, up to 16,000 watts continuously. That's a lot of power. To put that into perspective, if you ran your house 16,000 watts continuously for 12 hours a day on your home, in California, where the average price per kilowatt is like 30 cents a kilowatt hour, you'd be looking at like $57 a day and about a $1,700 a month electric bill. So as you can see, this thing packs a lot of punch. It can power the normal average home. But if you did need more power, maybe more surge power in the summertime, a lot of people run two different five ton air conditioners, then maybe you wanna look at putting another one of these in parallel, you can connect them side by side and double that power rating. Now I'll have links in the description of this video to where you can click on to go purchase either of these. And just by clicking on that link, by me sending you there to that website, it will automatically apply a $50 discount. It'll say Unplug Texan 50 discount at the end of checkout, just automatically by using my links to go there. Now, when you're on battery only at night, when no solar is present, this thing can still do 12,000 watts continuously. Now, to give you an idea how much that is, my home is all electric. Now, albeit, I do use energy efficient appliances like a heat pump water heater, a heat pump all-in-one combo washer dryer, heat pump air conditioner, heater, but I also have things that most houses don't have as well. So I live in a rural area here and I have a deep water well where I have a 240 volt pressure pump down at the bottom of that well that's like almost 500 feet deep. And I also have to have an above ground pressure pump that's also 240 volts because I have five homes on the property and my system powers all of those houses or the water systems to all of those houses, not the electrical components of those houses, just the water. Oh yeah, and I also have a workshop that has six full-size refrigerators in it. Now add that to the two refrigerators I have in my house. And I have inside that workshop a little office, kind of a home office that I use to work out of. So while I do have energy efficient appliances, I also have more items, electrical items that most of you don't have that probably averages it out. I only use at the max like a little over 9,000 watts I've seen. And I'm typically between two to 5,000 watts that my whole house is using. So this can obviously power the typical American home. Now let's do a quick overview of how this system works. I'll just kind of walk you through it and how it's wired, and then we'll start doing some load testing. So let's check it out. Now let's go over how this thing works. So I've got all the doors opened up to the grid boss here, my electrical panel that it's feeding, and also the FlexBoss 21 here. So I installed this meter as well so you all can really see and have to make common sense of how this all kind of goes together. So this would be your incoming power from your meter at your, at your house. And then I bring that three aught wire, which is capable of 200 amps, right? Or at least this service is. And it goes into this gutter here, which is a 12 by 12 gutter. Which I do have a link to this and where I bought it online um, in that schematic if you want to download it. And then this is the flex boss. So that three aught wire comes in right here into this main 200 amp heat and breaker, which does not come with the unit when you buy it. You have to actually buy this separate. I do have a link for that in that PDF schematic as well. It's very easy to install, actually. But you got the two hot legs, three hot going into right here, and this is your big main disconnect. So you can literally go off grid by just switching that to the off position. And actually, I'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, so we just went off grid completely. Now the flex boss over here in my battery, AG4 battery, indoor wall mount battery, which I do have a link to this in the description as well, are powering this the lights that you see right here. And this whole basically setup that I've got going. 
see the neutrals are connected back there. That's where the neutral from the grid comes in, kind of behind. See where that white tape is. I've got the ground wire here. And again, I've got in that PDF the size of all these wires, the diagram showing where they're connecting and all that. So it's very, uh, very user friendly to read. This here is if you want a panel that's 200 amps or up to 200 amps that is only fed by the grid. So if the grid is turned off like I did, this shuts down automatically. So you will not have power to whatever panel that is. I want everything to be 100% backed up, so I have it on the backup panel here. So that's where you see these two 3 out wires coming in. Now those are going to feed into, into the gutter and come up into my panel here. This is an MID is what they call it, a microgrid interconnected device. So kind of everything is centralized right here. So you've got the grid coming in right here. You've got the inverter. These two wires up here are from the FlexBoss 21, which I'll go over in a second. So everything kind of plugged into this central hub and then it gets distributed from here. So how that works is obviously I showed you the grid comes in and goes into this device. And also the power from the FlexBoss here 21 inverter from the battery gets converted to AC, right? The DC power here gets converted to AC. And then that gets sent through this box, through this gutter, and right into the 90 amp breaker that you see here. Everything is centralized right here. This, it, this makes the install really easy if you want to have the grid as backup. I highly recommend it. Now, if you're going 100% off grid, don't worry about getting the micro interconnected device here. The grid boss, just get the Flex Boss 21 and whatever batteries you're going to. So let's move on here. So again, it goes from the grid into the grid boss here. Power goes from the inverter and the battery and goes also into the grid boss here. And then your home panel, which would be this here for you, that gets fed out of the backup port here. This is the backup. It goes down and then feeds into this panel and runs this panel. So very simple. Right now I'm off grid. So this is what's feeding the home panel here. But what's nice about this grid boss is I can isolate also. I can isolate my inverter to where I could literally still, if I wanted to service this thing or say I wanted to pull it off the wall and swap it with a different inverter, I could not. I would not lose power on this panel because there's, this is a transfer switch right here as well. And you can't have these two on at the same time. And on the actual cover for this, it, there's a basically a lockout switch that won't let you have these both on at the same time. So let's put the grid back on now. Click over. All right, so you heard that click. So the grid is now back on. So right now the grid is my backup. But what I'm going to do is I am going to turn off the backup panel here, which, like I said, powers this panel. So you're going to see the lights go out. And then I'm going to turn on this as the transfer switch, and it'll light up or power up this panel again without using the Flex Boss 21. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to turn off backup panel breaker. All right, so you saw the lights go out, except for the lights I have here plugged into a, a portable solar unit for my video shooting, so I could actually see here. But now let's turn on this, and there you go. Now our grid is powering this panel 100%. Now we've isolated this. We can work on this unit, pull it off the wall, unplug the batteries do whatever we want here and not be down inside the house, which is a huge benefit. So that in a nutshell is how this system is wired. Let me know in the comments if you have questions, I'll go ahead and try to answer those. But yeah, very easy to install, very simple system. I really think EG4 has done a good job with this thing. Now let's test to see the FlexBoss 21 here start up my four ton traditional air conditioner. So I've got a big uh, SO cord outside that's this double pole 50 amp breaker you see here. I ran it to the outside of this building and then all the way over to my four ton air conditioner. So let's go out there and see how that's wired up and get that thing started. So here's where that 50 amp double pole breaker, the wire that's connected to it pops out of the wall into this junction box and then goes all the way and just runs on the ground here over, over to my four ton air conditioner that's about eh, 80 feet away or so. And this is it right here. So I've got this SO cord wired right here to this. Obviously I didn't need the neutral. I just need the two hot legs and the ground. And let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, so let's start the AC.
All right, a AC is running. 94 amps is what I'm seeing here. So pass that test. So as you can see, this FlexBoss 21 inverter can obviously handle easily my four ton traditional air conditioner. And again, it should be able to start a five ton air conditioner without a soft start, without an issue. Now let's do some load testing, some continuous load testing here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've got two more space heaters on the other side of the room here on different, on different circuit, or actually all these are on multiple circuits. These two are going to be on one circuit on a half setting, so I don't overload that circuit. These two are each going to be individually on their own circuit. These two are going to be on one circuit, and I've got another two that are going to be sharing the same circuit as well on a half setting. So I should be able to get the continuous wattage up to about 8,000, 9,000 watts maybe. Um, and obviously uh, on battery mode without solar panels, which is the way I have it right now, I should be able to get up to 12,000 watts, but won't be able to quite get there until I add circuits, more circuits into this um, building that I am actually building out right now. So I've got the app up, at least on my laptop here. As you can see, I wanted to run this load test when the batteries were at 29% there. So they're on the lower side of things to see how it performs under this type of heavy load with a lower battery state of charge. So as you see right now, I'm pulling from the grid at 210 watts. And as you can see where it says standby right here, once I go off grid, you'll see obviously everything from the grid shut down and then you'll see it go into standby or backup power here. So let's go ahead and shut the grid off and we will start doing this load test. So I can go to my grid boss here. And I can just shut down the grid by turning off this big 200 amp Eaton breaker, which does not come with the grid boss. You have to buy this separate, which I do have the link to that in my PDF. But let's go ahead and turn off the grid, simulating a grid outage. And we should maybe see the lights flicker just a hair. Yep, just barely. Now let's refresh the screen here and see if it changes and the grid shuts down and goes over to backup mode. Yep, there we go. So now the grid is down. I'm 100% running on batteries right now. We're using right now 172 total watts. And let's start turning on some loads. Let's turn on these two space heaters on the half setting. All right, those are on. All right, now we're using 1,344 watts. Let's go ahead and plug in a few more. There's a couple more. Let's go ahead and do these as well. All right, let's see how many watts we're pulling now. Right, just under 3,000 watts. Let's plug in a few more. Right, turned on a few more. We're at 5,718 watts. I can hear the fans on the FlexBoss 21 turn on now, now that we're running a decent sized load on it. All right, I turned on another space heater on full blast. We're at 7,269 watts. And so now we're starting to push some power through this thing. Let me see if I can set turn one on to full power, which I might trip my 20 amp circuit here if I do this, but let's give it a shot. All right, just turned it on. So we're putting a pretty good load on this thing at 7,337 watts. I can't really put any more on it as I don't have any more circuits yet that I've built out into this shop yet, but I will soon. So I will do another load test as I start to, uh, Put in more circuits but well there we go we're at 8106 watts now it's running just great battery state of charge has gone down to 26 percent from where it was so we're definitely pulling a good amount of power now i'd really like to push this thing to the max but like i said i need to add more circuits before i can really do that so stay tuned i'll release another video out here soon so in my opinion this grid boss paired with the flex boss 21 is a great decision if you're looking to kind of Go all in with solar, really power your whole home, not using the critical loads panel, literally powering everything, including your air conditioner. For the price, these two things combined are about $6,000. Now, obviously, you still need to buy the battery. You still need to buy solar panels at that price. And two years ago, I probably paid an almost double what you can get now today for actually getting more power. The prices for this equipment has been coming down. Will it stay that way? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, we do have tariffs probably coming down the pipe here. Now, the free market is pretty good at finding ways around that by setting up manufacturing in other places to try to get around or skirt those tariffs, but no one's really sure how it's gonna perform. My opinion on that is, if you need the system, go ahead and get it now, don't wait. 
are prices going to continue to plummet like they have? I don't think so. I think at best, they're going to stay right around where they're at for a while. So the Grid Boss and Flex Boss 21 have only been out for about a month, and they have sold out completely out of them. So they are on back order. I think they're slated to ship out sometime in early February. So if you want to purchase one of these, go ahead and put that order in now, and then they will let you know once it ships. So if not, if you try to wait till they're in stock again, they might be out of stock again by the time they get their next shipment. So make sure to do that now if, if you're interested in this thing and are serious about it. As a reminder, make sure to download my free wiring schematic if you are interested. And again, you can download that for free at flexboss21.com. That's it for now, everyone. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so you'll be alerted when I release more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next video.